Hello, hello, you all. Um, thank you very much, Kate, for the kind invitation. It's a great pleasure to be able to contribute, build a cell. I should also thank you and the steering committee from Build a Cell to allow us to relaunching or expanding or intensifying Build a Cell activities for South America. So last week we just launched the Build a Cell South America. So for all of you that want to check, we should try to contribute as well uh, with Build a Cell uh, worldwide, which I think it is, is the one that is already going on. Uh, my presentation, I'm going to talk about a bit about uh, bacteriophages and summarize some of our current results um, one in one publication that is coming soon. And I'll give you the DOI number also that you can probably visit later on. What's supposed I think within the next two weeks should be uh, released in the system. And I have to share my screen here. Is it there? Yep, it's there. Okay. Yeah, this, this is the title that will be divided a bit, a, a very, very quick introduction about bacterial phase. So we don't actually, Elibio, we don't see your slides. We just see a folder with your slide deck. Suppose you are screening sharing now. I mean, why not? I open it. For me, it's supposed to be open. Can you see it? No? No, we still see your folder documents and you have the today's presentation highlighted, but we don't see the open document. Why not? It's open for me. Let's see, we're sharing the screen now. Share screen. Maybe you're sharing a different screen. Do you have more than one screen? Mm. Yeah, okay, I know what you mean. What about this one? Well, oh, is in the share screen? Oh, now we see that presentation, perfect. Is it? Yeah. Uh, okay, the next, uh, the, the second slide, uh, the team that produced this article and the title and the DOI number and so on is, as I said, is, uh, should be released within the next few weeks. So I'm, I'm going to summarize this publication. I will initiate talking about uh, the, the uh, studies on bacteriophage dates from 65, early, early even than that. After Watson and Creek actually uh, produce the structure of the DNA later on, when Arab, which uh, means uh, I'm a close friend of him, still, he's still working in Switzerland. And he got a Nobel Prize to actually uh, show for the first time how to actually uh, cut the DNA. And his studies were on bacteriophages also. Uh, Bacteriophages are very abundant in the planet. Probably uh, is the most abundant organism that you'll be able to find in nature. And most of the virus um, infect bacteria. So most of them are bacteriophages. The group from Margaret Smith in the UK and, and Fog, and they produce a very nice uh, publication and review that uh, I would recommend you to take a look at. It. Very interesting. Basically, 
and they talk about serene integrase, several classes of integrases, but I'm going to concentrate uh, this figure I borrow from, from his uh, publication, for their, from their publications. And basically, we have um, in the top, we have that uh, attachment to B, attachment B, that means attachment to bacteria, and attachment to phage. Um, the phage actually introduced part of this genome in the bacterial genome. And the, the bacterial phage, they do have a, a very, very interesting mechanism that they can integrate part of their genome in the bacteria and they, they can also excise back when not in the case manner, in the case format, when they want to replicate. So it is a very interesting, and you can see uh, down here, that is when they, the attachment uh, site of the phage uh, integrate into the attachment B, they, they share half of their sequences to form uh, what we call the attachment left and the attachment right, which are part of the attachment B and maybe exactly half of the attachment B and half of the attachment P. That is a very elegant also a model, uh, a mathematic model, which I'm going, I'm not going to go deep into that, uh, but it is a very elegant and shows precisely the kinetics of how the, the ATTB and ATTP do form um, the attachment left, left in attachment right. What we still don't know is the thermodynamic of this mechanism. This is still to be uh, elucidated and it's complex, but it's really interesting. But there, um, just initiating going to the uh, article is Drew and the group in, a few years ago uh, published a very interesting publication um, on logic gates and using the true table to switch on and off uh, uh, some biological parts. And probably later on, which was probably at the same time, Chris Voigt group actually produced a very, very interesting uh, article uh, on showing that use of integrases from bacteriophage, serine integrases, I mean, part of, uh, serine integrases are integrases that can actually switch on and off. Tyrosine integrases, for example, you can switch back in a irreversible manner, cannot switch back. But anyway, they produce using serine integrase a very wide evaluation in prokaryotic systems. So, then we thought, would we be possible to use this amount or this number of integrates in eukaryotic systems? Then if we can do that, we can expand the possibilities for which you produce the genetic circuits. And as a very interesting tool to study gene function and maybe some applications also that I'm going to mention quickly in the, in the day. So um, we initiate trying to evaluate different eukaryotic cells from different, different eukaryotic systems and human cells, bovine cells, plant cells, uh, stem cells from the brain. And basically uh, the design was to use the integrase or several integrase that we have evaluated to generate um, the uh, genetic suites. And we, we did use GFP in an inverted 
sequence. So you, you are sure that you have no green fluorescence if you actually integrate that in, within a new genome with the reverse uh, codifying sequence. And we did a co-transformation experiment. Uh, I'll explain a bit in the next slide a bit more. And we analyzed the product using cytometry, full cytometry, and PCR, um, and sequencing, PCR and sequencing also. And basically what we did after the co-transformation, you can switch GFP on. So it is a matter for which you be able to know and to get the results about active, uh, a correct activation or not of the specific integrates. This is the strategy. I put two strategies here. The A, um, in one plasmid, we do put the integrase that you want. And the, the, the other plasmid, we did under, oh, sorry. Um, in the second plasmid, you put the GF, the inverted GF. And we took care to actually use two different promoters. Elongation factor for animal cells and the ubiquitin. And so we do a co-transformation and produce a cell cream. Uh, we did the same similar, similar strategy with plants, uh, two different promoters and two several different integrases to produce uh, a green cell. Basically, what happened is you add the gene that you want in an inverted sequence, and then into the cell, they switch on using these integrases. This slide shows the switch in human cells. We, we use hex cells and we use several other cells. And you can see here, this is the, uh, the control, integrase 13, but we use several integrases. We test about, uh, forgot about this slide, but then no problem. Uh, uh, integrase 13, we, we did use integrase 2, 5, 7, 9, and 13. And you can see the cytometer showing that integrase 13, uh, got a, a very good expression. C31 and BXB1 are integrases that we do have so far been using for several years in eukaryotic systems. However, they are not enough for which to produce uh, genetic circuits. Want to, to produce genetic circuits, we, you, we do need uh, several integrases in order that you can actually switch genes on and off. And this figure B is just to show in numbers uh, uh, the expression, but it's exactly the same as this one. And we also evaluate um, using the amplicons. These are the amplicons product from the end, producing the ATTL and ATPR. I mean, uh, we produce these amplicons, and what we do with them is uh, we sequence it. And here is just uh, to show the, the, the D is to show the, the viability, to cell viability, to show that the integrase per se is not toxic or it's not killing the cell and so on. Let's see. These are the genetic switches in, in plant protoplasts, which are not very much different. Um, basically, the, the integrase that we have tested so far integrase 13 and which is uh, this one and integrase 9 where the best gave us the best expression sometimes integrase 4 depend upon the system always you see comparing with phi 31 and bxb1 inter, in, integrase 13 is, is far better for this specific cell and the same with the amplicons i'm not going to repeat that and we've got also uh, expression and we, we tried and tested T lymphocytes. 
which uh, we did not have with so many integrates, but the ones that we did so far, the 13 and 9, and give a very good expression also. Oh, we test the integrase activity in neuro stem cells, which is good. A lot of application for which to understand gene regulation in this such a important and perspective important systems too. For human beings also. And in this one, we test it. The integrase 2, 9, and 13. Um, uh, promoter. Certainly, that uh, when, when you think about uh, genetic circuits, uh, or first thought, I put it almost at the end, but this was the beginning. The first attempt was to use uh, promoters because if we could uh, and actually uh, precisely control promoter activity, we could almost switch on and off energy. And we tested uh, the integrate, we, we put in tendon in, in a plasma, in the same manner, two plasmids, we put the integrates two, four, and five, and the promoter, inverted promoter. And then we activate that in the same manner as we did with the other one. One interesting, um, and what happened was uh, promoters do leak. Uh, all promoters leak. It's very, very rare to find a promoter that you have no leak. This has been studied for decades, and there are a few promoters that some people actually claim in specific systems that they didn't get a, a, a leak, but uh, all promoters that we tested so far, we've got leak. And then to evaluate, that was the reason why we moved to uh, invert the codifying sequence, because if you invert the codifying sequence, you certainly will have no leak at all, because it's impossible. Uh, for a gene to work in an inverted position. Oh, I hope you can see here. Uh, I, for uh, all, I'm just, as I said, mentioned to you that this is a summary, but take a look at the promoters, all the promoters. Uh, this sequence came from this uh, GFP, expressing cells out of after the activation with the different integrates. Just as an example, as, as I've mentioned, we add the integrates to, and we produce here, the, by sequence we detect that, the ATT left for integrates to, the one that we activate, and we had intended the ATTP from the phage, we, we did not switch for ATT5, as, as you've said, as you saw in the, the last slide. And you have the 35S in the correct position, as, as expected, because we invert that. And we add that inverted position, but it's in the right position now. And ATTB from the bacteria for integrase 5. ATTB for the integrase 4, and again, ATTR, which is the left part. So you do have, you do have here the flip edge. If we, in, in the next, uh, uh, when, when we try and we test the next promoters, we, you had the ATT4 instead if we want to actually uh, reconnect that. Oh, that's it from the article. What we are doing now is we are producing some, what we call the cascades, genetic switch to regulate part of 
of this uh, integrases. And take a look. So we have, uh, we add, basically we generate to test two integrates, 13 and two. Um, so you have to switch that on to have the GFP uh, all inverted. You have integrates 13 that once expressed, we will actually flip the integrates two and flip GFP. So you have a fluorescent cells. This was the preliminary. And again, here, uh, we generate amplicons and we actually sequence it and we've got all the correspondent uh, sequence within the genome. So having that, what we did, and well, this is, is undergoing, we still don't have the, the result, it's in a hypothesis of application of the integrases and and uh, and the switch that I uh, I've shown you in the last slides. So we had within the genome of Nicotiana bentamiana, we call tobacco, but it's not tobacco, but it's Nicotiana bentamiana. We introduce and integrate uh, four different integrases and a control of GFP inverted, I mean, no expression. And we've got the PVX virus and we insert the integrase in the virus. What's the idea? The idea is to infiltrate these with the virus in a plant carrying the integrases. Um, is a study to evaluate the possibility for which we infect this leaf. This is a systemic virus, so the virus will replicate here. So the idea is to have the GFP expressing that you can have it, you can see they express very well. But the idea is when the cell replicates and the virus replicate also, it replicate and systemically distribute uh, they integrate in the whole plant. This have possibility for quite a few applications, ending probably my my presentation here. And um, on genetic circuits for eukaryotic cells, and the use of this virus, and we are trying to evaluate the, the PVX virus in plants as a format and a preliminary approach in order for we to further on have the integrases in any system. And through physical, chemical or biological inducer, we'll be able to switch on and off different genes. Can you imagine, for example, if uh, you have a plant that's producing a specific compound that, let's say, um, under a drug, uh, you can switch a genes on and economize the physiological process of the plant and make the plant switching genes to actually against straw. Or we can uh, use it in fermentation process, we can stop the cell to grow in one specific stage and uh, back to produce or express in one desirable uh, ex uh, expression stage. So uh, this will be very interesting uh, for which you evaluate more promoters. Promoters is an interesting thing, interesting feature, and inducers. And the inducers could be physical, chemical, or biological. Biological, I thought about it. Uh, uh, a non-pathogenic virus or part of a virus that you can carry a, a, a specific integrase to switch one specific gene on and off according you want in the time you want. Could be a chemical also, 
and could be a physical, maybe light or heat. Uh, so um, the idea was to generate, this art was to generate and to intensify and expand the tools uh, for you to be able to understand a bit more and deeper about gene expression. Um, I should tell you that all the plasmids uh, in the publication, you see a, a long page with, uh, in the supplement of the, all the plasmids generate and they are, all of them are available at Adigene already. So if anyone wants the plasmid to have a try, please feel free, it's all open. And again, I put all the team that uh, were involved in, in this specific uh, article. Thank you all, be safe and strong. Thank you. Was that too long, was too short, no? Was that okay? Thank you, the timing was perfect. Um, now we have some time left for questions. Um, I could start unless someone else has a question. You can also put questions in chat. Okay, Elvia, so let me start. Um, I have a very predictable and boring question that I always like to ask, but seriously, how could you use that to control complex gene circuits um, in an actual liposomal synthetic cell? Can you engineer it? Well, you... Yes, yes, we, we, we've been trying about, uh, well, we've been trying and already with John and some specific approach. I, I, I think this will be one, there are several, several uh, uh, questions still that we don't know uh, how big the DNA we can flip. Yeah. We, we gotta know that. I'm not sure. I, I suppose, according to the size of the integrase and the size that they have to survive in, in nature, we do expect that about 50 kb, we should be able to. That's big. The idea would be to switch 200 or 500 kb, an entire pathway, isn't it? I think mm -hmm. this would be fantastic. But we don't know. We got to test that. We got to get a long plasmid. Could be a, a well, don't need to be a, any sequence. We have to synthesize and put in the borders the, the, the integrase and can try in any cell to see if they flip. Even if, because one interesting feature to test that is that you don't need expression. Could be any, any sequence at all. Because uh, at the beginning, some, some uh, integrases, we didn't see any GFP uh, expression on the microscope. And we thought, wow. But let's see if, is, is it flipping? And we sequence it. That, that was the reason why we, we went to, to sequence all of that. And the interesting feature is that the integrates is so perfect that they are able to flip. Sometimes you have no expression, but you, the DNA was flipping, you see? Anything you put there, they efficiently flip, even if they don't get expression. And it is interesting. I don't know how to answer specifically your question, but... Uh, no, no, I think that answered it pretty well. Um, at least in terms of possibilities, what could we... Um, yes, yeah, so we, we've, been, we've been trying to... Well, we've been actually doing some experiments. Actually, Marco did it. And in the in CIN 3.8. And, mm -hmm. and the idea is, as the synthetic genome directly in one way in order for we can we actually switch on and off some specific genes there and, and get back to work you see uh, switch in in the, in the other position and this is one one thing that we 
we'd like to, to evaluate more deeper. We still don't have much reserve, but we just initiate to do that. And I, I think that the, these tools are going to be important for either for complex genomes, but very important also for synthetic genomes to help us to understand specific traits. For example, we have a specific gene that we can switch on and off um, in plate, you see. If you mm -hmm. have some chemical inducer, you switch that on and off and you see cell grow, how, how the cell is going to behave. I mean, there are, yeah. I think there are quite a few appli potential applications to studying function, yes. And for, for um, synthetic cells and, and, and genome, I think will be useful. Thank you. Um, you have a question in chat. Can you see that? No, sorry. Should I, should I, can I stop sharing? Yeah, if you stop sharing, you should see. Okay, in chat, where chat is. Hmm. Apologies, let's see what my chat is. Oh, chat. Okay, what is the length? Oh, okay. It's a good question. What is the length of the longest promoted gene, Eklement, flip it with this man? Yeah, about three, uh, about three KB, three to four KB now. But it's not, it's, uh, we, we were able to flip up. I mean, you see, uh, GFP is almost three point something. And, but yes, we have to evaluate careful. And this is a very important question. Um, uh, I'd like to test about 50 KB. Very good question. Thank you. Can this matter use for, yes, yes, can be. Christopher, thank you, Chris, for your question. You mentioned chemical failure to trigger. Oh, the biological ones are the virus. Non-pathogenic virus, that systemic virus that you can find, for example, in plants we do have, we do have also in, in, in animal and in human cells, some non-pathogenic virus that uh, systemically uh, replicate uh, within the cell, within the system per se. So I think we, that, that was, and it is, the, the one that we've been doing with PVX, probably our first choice was to test in plants, but very good question also. Hello. Um, Alex. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for the talk, Olivier. It's fascinating. Um, there's something I, I, I want to understand is, so when, when we're talking about using the virus as a trigger, so it's actually the virus that becomes sort of the inducer and that will provoke the switch, right? The, well, it's not the virus. It's the integrase that we actually, yeah. yes, yes, yes. The virus, yes. So, so then um, with the, the plant example, so we have a multicellular system and then it's like the virus will sort of act like as a, as a, as a carrier because we then, we now on depend on the propagation and the replication of the virus. Doesn't that add an extra layer of, of um, complexity for the carrier because we have to go from one cell to another yeah, yes, very good question, Alex. Um, yes, the, the virus is because we are an issue. The I, ideally would be, for example, to have a physical inducer, let's say heat or light. But to do that, um, you do need a promoter. Speci you, you had to do that with some you have to be able to induce with something that we still cannot do. Uh, you can use, uh, there are some promoters that respond to uh, chemical inducers. So you could add, in, and we test that with some yeast, and you add in the media, in the culture media, and then you can induce, do, to do a chemical induced in, induction to, to, to switch on and off specific cell. 
but in a, uh, with the, the idea of the virus is because we we used to infiltrate and use the virus to express some proteins in plants. So we we are going to uh, we thought to use it at the beginning uh, the system that we do have, and we we do know that replicates very efficiently. There is one question of the virus. The virus, I think, is fantastic from the point of view that, for example, uh, if you have a, a non-pathogenic virus that you can spray by airplane as you pulverize uh, with chemical uh, plantation or crop specific crop, if you can actually do that with the virus and the virus carry a specific inducer that when reach the plant actually induce some uh, genes to switch on and off. This is the main idea that we want to reach and why we, we did use the, uh, the, the virus. But yes, I do agree with you. Uh, but there is another point. There are, for example, virus. Unfortunately, Alex, we, we don't have in nature a system that is like the, the, the one bullet that will be used for all because the virus, we cannot, we have limitation to integrate some uh, parts there. Uh, you cannot put a 50 KB in the PVX virus to carry for you as an inducer, several integrases. Well, we don't know how many we can actually do it, but we, we were, we were that, that was the first experiment that we did so far, only with the, with the PVX, with the integrase and the protoplast, was to see if it was going to work. Because we, we were reluctant to see if, if we could integrate two or about 2KB in a virus, in, in a PVX virus, and then we'll be able to replicate. Because if you put that, you can add, but maybe the virus won't replicate as well as as, as should be. And, that, that was the reason why we're using, uh, but yes, the virus, the, the idea is that the virus will replicate. If the virus replicate, Alex, and in every cell that they will go, we will meet, uh, as, we, as we integrate, the integrase in the genome of the plant is a transgenic plant that we integrate uh, the integrases. So, if you express the integrase, if the virus goes to another cell and expressing the integrase 13 or 9, and we recognize the, the, the integrase within the genome, and then the gene will be flipped. Mm -hmm. And the gene B uh, will turn on. We still don't know. This is hypothesis, as I said. Uh, and, we, and in fact, we... We don't know. We've got the plants there are in in uh, in California, but uh, I cannot bring the plants to Brazil. <laughs> we initiate the project, but the pandemic actually uh, block or uh, and the seeds are the seeds are there. We already have the plants, but we we were supposed to have the results already because this uh, were generated last year. So we have everything in hand to do an experiment, but we were unable to, to complete that. And I hope within the next three months, we, we should be able to complete this piece of work to see if the virus is going to replicate. It would be fantastic if we can do that. But we still don't know if it's gonna work. Part of the job is, did work. So let's wait the next step. And one, one last question. Um, if I understood correctly, you you explained that this process is reversible, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Good question. Uh, so, big size, yes. But it's, it's a bit more complicated because we still have we didn't go deep to the when you actually um, uh, integrate um, the bacteriophage is able to excise it. So go to the genome and back to the uh, ATT phage and ATT for the bacteria. To do that, you do need one specific integrase 
which is called excisionases, and the RDFs, which are recombination directionality factors. You do need, I don't know if you want all those, to actually be able to excise from the genome of the bacteria, but we are not using that. Uh, to, the trick is, instead of using excisionized to actually remove something, we don't need that. You just put in tandem two different integrates. For example, the two and 13. And if you produce the, integ the integrase two, we'll recognize this part and then we'll flip. And later on, you add the, inter the integrase 14 and we'll get this DNA and put it back. Okay. We're going to excision, as you see. Okay, so you can actually have the virus would express one integrase or another to be able to... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the reason why we, 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 we integrate within the genome four different integrases. Okay, yeah. Controlling inverted GFP. So the GFP will be on when the virus is in. For example, with the integrase 13, you can switch the virus and, and you can... If we add to the virus, integrates two, you're going to switch on GFP. If you get the virus again, and in fact, with the integrase five, for example, you can, you get off. And then you can, you see, you, we use different integrases to actually switch on and off. Certainly that you have to produce different integrates in the virus, it's not only one. One will be able to switch that on, but you need another virus with another integrase to speed that up. Okay, I get that. Because I was wondering, like, if, you, if, if it was the same process, like, you would get a blinking plant, but it's not because it's, like, different integrases, right? Different integrates, yes. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you very much. And I think you have other questions in the, in the chat. Yep. Yes. James. Hi, James. Do you see? Oh, yes, yes. Um, the question was, do you think it would be possible to use the stress response signaling pathways? Yes, very much so. Yes. We haven't tried, but it's great. It's great if you, if you want to try it. Um, Hayani. Hello, Hayani. It's from our team. Uh, the idea of the work, the question is, the idea of the work is to use virus to deliver integrate systemically. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for, for adding that. We will challenge integrates to interact with chromatin. Yeah, I didn't mention that. With chromatin and flip the plant DNA. This is our biolo biological question. We use both virus and plasmid uh, for integrate trans and expression. The, the inducible promoter is complicated and, and yeah, due to the leak, the promoter leak, as I, as I mentioned. Yeah, it's not a question, it was a comment. Thank you, thank you, Ryani. Right, Ryani is, is from our group, is the one that is actually uh, coordinating this specific project using the PV. Thank you. Is there any other one? You know? I haven't seen here. Christopher, you mentioned chemical. Oh, let me see, there is some, uh, if you have multiple integrates. Oh yeah, uh, Chris sent another message. If we have multiple instances of the same integrate mechanisms for various multiple inverted genes, could one have a global switch? Oh, this is amazing, isn't it? For a multiple units, that is a KB side. Yes, I mean, I discussed that. It's good that Ryan, which is with us, we, we were discussing that. 
and we thought about that and um, it's, it's complicated, but hopefully we'll be able to find uh, how to do that. It will be amazing, yes. Very, very good question, but I don't know. We got to work on that. Because the, the, first, the first idea was, and that we discussed it so far, let's assume all oh, these integrates, they are so efficient. Are they, uh, can we actually produce a synthetic integrates? No, it's a bit complicated when you, when you align that. And, but we haven't still goes deeper into this question, but it's, it's a very interesting point in question. Thank you, Chris. More question? Okay, if we don't have any other questions, um, I want to thank you, Alibio, very much again. No, um, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for giving a talk and thanks, for, uh, thanks everyone. And we will post the recording of this talk uh, on the Bilderso website. Yeah, and if, if anyone do urgently need to read the paper, just send me a message. I can send you the proof. Still, uh, but I can send you the proof that you find everything. There is someone actually ringing. I just muted. Someone was unmuted and his phone was ringing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everyone, and have a great week. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Kate. You all. Bye.